Welcome to Four Wheeler TV. I'm Bob Bauer. The trip to Moab has been nothing less than spectacular. I'm Tony Becker, and with the shakedown run of my CJ out of the way and my fears of its capabilities somewhat laid to rest, I was able to relax and enjoy some comfortable seat time on Flatiron Mesa. I also got a chance to talk to Buddy King of ARB and John Williams from Mount Logan Off-Road. Our adventure in the Canyonlands took a more aggressive turn when Craig Ross and Dave Polson took a small group of hardcore wheelers to Coyote Canyon. Oh. And that little detour gave us an opportunity to watch Craig from Rockworks putting his new Willie's buggy through its paces. There's a lot going on in Moab, and if you do get the opportunity to come here, you don't want to miss the expo. Bob Bauer and I shot down to the horse arena to see what was going on this year. Just about everybody involved in off-road is at the expo. Does he have a lovely Amber? How are you? How are you? Good. How's your week been? It's been good. Oh, am I interrupting you? No, you're looking good. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have pretty women on once in a while. That's how it goes. I'm going to pull this thing into full traction. I'll talk to you in a minute. Okay. It also gave me a chance to put a face with the many names that I've been doing business with during the buildup of my CG. Bob. Yeah. This is Todd from Aqualoo. This is his tub. Oh, on this. nice tub. How you doing? Todd, howdy. I'm Bob. Good, going good. Did you sell what you brought? Yeah, everything's pre-sold, so. <laughs> that is fantastic. Are you going to build a rig? I'm building one right now, yeah. But you're building one for the snow area yeah. and the stuff that you do. It's an aluminum tube frame with a, putting a 540 caddy in it. So it'll be, I'm trying to get it under 4,000 pounds is my main objective, so. Oh, hey, what's happening, guys? Sneaking up on me. <laughs> Are you doing any driving while you're out here? Um, I'm riding my retired stock modified truck around on the trail. Two-time champion rock crawler right here, guys. This isn't just a game. These guys are serious about this stuff. Jeremy Pulse of Throttle Down Customs showed up to give the crowd a good look at the types of frames he's made, one of which my Jeep is built around. Uh, your passage uh, for the brake line hole and your brake line tab, motor mounts. This guy told me he built over 250 frames last year by himself. Then there's Steve Kramer of Full Traction. Steve's here with a really cool display that demonstrates just how much travel his suspension actually allows. It's all good stuff. From state-of-the-art steering components to, well, this guy, Rick Russell. Rick Russell's put out more maps and videos about the how-tos and where-tos of off-road than, well, just about anybody. From Pat Gramillion's onboard welders to Clifton Slay's wild paint schemes. If you've got a question about rigs, these guys have answers. Seems like everywhere you turn, there's someone you know or someone you've heard of. And if everyone's smiling and eager to talk about the growing off-road industry, that's because for these guys, it's not a business. It's a lifestyle. For me, you see, I hadn't had quite enough of the trails yet, so I was sneaking out. Howdy. How's it going? Good. How are you today? Good. Busy as hell, aren't you? Pretty busy. Hello. <laughs> okay. Would you like a mountain? Uh, yeah, why not? I'm going to follow those guys, but I'll look right. for it later. It's a mountain. Hell's Revenge. Have a good day. Have a good day. See you, Rob. Later, folks. Later, folks. Hell's Revenge. Right? Hell's Revenge. 
This trail is a long series of slick rock climbs and slow descents. With extremely steep off-camber angles and huge drop-offs on either side, Hell's Revenge is not for the faint of heart. You lose your focus here just for a moment, and you can get into serious trouble. This is Dump Bump. So it's right above the city of Moab parking area, and there's a slick rock right here, and you get a whole crowd of people just trying to make it up this cup this little thing right here. It'll be interesting. We're with Kevin Hawkins and the Sunday. This is gonna be great. But get your front end on about two feet and then slowly into it and give a little bit of gas and it's really the momentum that gets you up there. When we return, we challenge Hell's Revenge. And later, Kevin Hawkins talks about the real dangers of this game. Okay, this is a playground called the Dump Bump. And uh, everyone kind of crowds around at the base of it and uh, tries to get up with the seems like the more black rubber on this one, the slipperier it is. And, and as the day goes along, uh, it gets slipperier and slipperier and the crowd gets uh, wilder and it's really kind of fun. Uh, we try it a couple of times and it's kind of the start of uh, Hell's Revenge Drill. And uh, we'll, go, we'll go over and try it and play around, watch a few people and then, uh, then we'll head on into Hell's Revenge. Kevin Hawkins makes it look easy. Here's what it looks like from his point of view. This is my first initiation. Exactly like that, and then step it up. Go! Yeah! Stay with it, you got it. Work the wheel, work the wheel, work the wheel. Now! One more time usually breaks. <laughs> now after several attempts, you only have a few choices left. Keep beating on it until it breaks. That was close. Accept the feet and take the bypass. You want me? Okay. You think I'd make it if you did? Or toss your keys to a champion rock crawler and call it a day. The pressure's on. <laughs> Hey, I'm gonna try this little dump bump. You got a whole lot of people around here, so you really don't wanna look stupid. But I figure I already look stupid, so I'd be all right. Uh, the hot tub is pretty cool. There should be a big group up there and, and um, you don't think you want to get in it? I don't know. We'll see when we get uh, there. I'm not. I don't really. You I look stupid most of the time, and when you got a bunch of people around, who needs that? Hey, that's what but makes a jeeper to, out of afraid. you. That's what makes a jeeper out of you. Got it. I can do it. Okay. All right. Well, All let's right. do one one thing at a time. A brief detour to the dump bump is fun, but it's only part of the real experience. The scene to Hell's Revenge is breathtaking, and the views sweep the LaSalle Mountains to the Arches National Park. While there are some bypasses for the stock rigs to follow, Hell's Revenge is 16 miles of excitement with enough technically challenging obstacles to keep the veteran wheeler pretty happy. How you doing? Hi! What went away on that? Drive shaft! Oh man, that's a drag. Then it took out the starter. Oh, that's a double Speed drag. It Isn't it uh, You'll have her fit by tomorrow. It's already done. This is a good time to say something about dogs on the trail. It's nice to have man's best friend along, but his safety depends on you. 
Sadly, many dogs are lost or even killed out here on the trail. My dog is tethered inside my rig with a harness from buckleuppups.com, specifically designed for this type of terrain. I go everywhere with my dog, and I think you should too. Just do the right thing. Strap them in or leave them at home. Well, this is our third year rock racing. We came to rock race tomorrow. Right, I'll see you guys rock crawl. Rock race. race. Oh, rock with the XRA. With the XRA. It's no slow a moving, faster. no cones. Yeah, no crawling. Start to finish as Full fast throttle. as you can. It's a blast. You should come out. It's a blast. I'm the only girl. you got to come out and support me. While the Dump Up, Lion's Back, and Potato Salad Hill are nearby, they aren't officially part of Hell's Revenge. The hot tubs, on the other hand, are. Now, Mickey's hot tub is kind of a rite of passage. Some guys go straight through it, and others, well, they're not so lucky. <laughs> this is where people go to watch one another, kind of like arena-style football. You get as close to the action as possible. The hot tubs lend themselves to all types of vehicles. There's really no telling as to what will and what won't make it. That was fun. We had, to, we had to give a little bit of gas, get her spinning out of the thing, but it was a good time. Get, get a picture of this whole rig here, man. <laughs> so first time out here, uh, we actually run the U-Rock series. We've been out west wheeling, but that's man-made courses on the Supercrawl courses, so this is great. It's, it's unreal. It's easy to line up the front end, but you've got to line up the back end, too, or he's going to put it on its side. Traction like that, you know, changes everything. The right tire and the right traction. I think the hardest part of this right here is all the people around, right? Don't you think? Doing this with a crowd, that's tough. But otherwise, it may not be that bad. I'll say that now. Well, finally, it was my turn. And I've seen a lot of pictures of guys on their lids in here, so I wasn't taking anything for granted. I got the dog out of the Jeep and I dove in. I'm trying to crawl it, see if they'll stick. With a few attempts at finding the right line, I was out. However, the guy behind me wasn't as lucky. This orange line you see is a synthetic winch rope, designed specifically for environments just like this. With all these people around, if this were to break, the line would just fall to the ground, not putting anyone in danger. But that'll be good right there. You never know what's around the next corner. One minute you're laughing with friends, and the next, you're upside down and on your lid. Oh, Everybody all right? Everybody all right? Yeah. Oh, well, we're coming down and stalled and it slid sideways and let go and came over in front of it. So everybody's okay. No alcohol. We're good. This is a heads-up game. The repercussions for losing your focus can be disastrous. In situations like these, sometimes it's best to let the most experienced people ride the rigs. Fortunately for these guys, Kevin Hawkins was right around the corner. Riding a rig is always a difficult situation, especially in this case and on this incline. This deal took three rigs, two buggies and a Humvee up on top. But with patience and experience, this rig was righted safely and without incident. Sorry about your rig, but for hey, sir, we built forever. that last night and the whole rig cost 500 bucks. So, <laughs> the best kind. So, the plan is to square it up, spin, spin my end first. You're going to be the heaviest, maybe the spring on my side and then something on the back side of it. That was good. We just tucked and rolled. That's good. You guys did. Nobody got hurt. You guys did. Oh, really thank good. God. I just. You got everybody's fine. Well, that's, that's a good attitude, you know. He asked me if I wanted the truck for 200 bucks, and he said he didn't want to go down it. He had a bad feeling, and 
He was right. I, I was telling about nine years ago, I had rolled over in an early Bronco, and Kevin was the one that, I was on Phil's Hill, and I got stuck in this crack, and they had three witches in it. And I was way over there, and I saw Bronco tail lights, and I saw his Jeep, and I'm like, oh man, this must be a hobby of his or something. We started careening to the right, started flipping down the hill, and luckily everyone's okay. It totally scared me. My heart's still beating pretty fast, but it's actually our second date, the guy who was driving. So kind of scary after seeing, you know, different things, people falling down the hill, and now we just did it. My heart's racing, and I'm okay. <laughs> These guys were really lucky, and they were given a good idea of the dangers of four-wheeling, but it doesn't always end that well. Moab is uh, Moab is so fun and beautiful, and it's a challenge. People get out here and and just really kind of lose get into it so much they kind of lose respect for for what can happen. And uh, I like I like coming over here because it kind of gets you grounded. Uh, it, it makes your risk taking a little bit less. Uh, there was some teenagers that were going up around up on top of lions back here and uh, the back side there was stories that people come down the back side and I've done it but not a lot of people do it and these uh, two kids were coming down the back side and it's uh, it's really narrow right here on this one spot up on top and there's a uh, there's a diagonal well this is the lion's back there's a diagonal drop as you're coming down. And then there's a, there's a burn that kind of is on the side. The closer to the ledge you go, this diagonal ledge is not quite as steep, but the pucker factor of getting over here on this cliff is, is pretty scary. And these kids were probably scared on this cliff and they, they got up on this berm a little higher, so when the front left tire dropped off that ledge, it was too steep, it just magnified it. They rolled over one roll, and then they were off. And there was one kid that was outside the Jeep, and I guess he held on to it, and it projected him over. But there was a little, there's a, a little fin right here, but there was uh, scrape marks from the Jeep, or the forerunner, they hit that uh, ledge and then ended up in that crack right there. They painted the marks where the bodies landed and there was one up there by that bush and then one back here. You know, it just kind of gives a perspective of in all that fun, there is some danger in this sport. You really have to respect uh, your limits. Where are you guys from? Ogden. Come out here often? Every Easter. Every Easter? Yeah. Right yes. Very cool. What's your names? Sheila. Amy. You guys mind if I shoot some video of you for the Outdoor Channel? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you look great. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> it's all windy. This is called the uh, escalator. And from down below, some buggies went up, and it looks so simple. And you can see if Kevin Hawkins is playing with it, there's some difficulty here. We're going to see what we can do. I'll let him get to the top and, you know, he won't say nothing until I have that panic look in my eyes. This is this Jeep was done at 5 a.m. on Monday, and we're here. This is awesome. This is Moab. Less than a year ago, this Jeep had a manual transmission and leaf spring suspension. Now an automatic with coils front and rear. No, you gotta go that Needless way. to say, it's like driving someone else's rig. Yeah, keep the hand, put your left foot on the brake. Oh, but I'm not afraid. I'll get the hang of it. That looked good. <laughs> Thanks a lot. The guy gets sitting there loving it. Kind of the way you treated me in the squeeze. And then once again, the guy right behind me puts his on his side. Just for 
guys that watch this show, they can afford this rig. But actually, right now, it's probably got a deal on it. <laughs> yeah, cheaper. <laughs> it's cheaper on its side. I don't know how to even work this winch. I'm used to the older one. Hang on, I'm waiting for a controller. Okay. At your service. Thanks. <laughs> what it does is tighten up and then it'll kink it. Like, kind of like that, but that's not that. Brand new Jeep Fish at 5 a.m. On, on Monday and we're using every part of it. <laughs> These guys don't know what they're doing. <laughs> don't want to make it a circus of it. I think he got her. Good job. Tell him not to drop off that because he'll pull me in with him. Yeah, and hook. <laughs> you don't want to go for a ride. that's about it for us. I'm going to kick back here, enjoy the view, and I'll see you next week from Moab, Utah.